Hey guys, 420 scene here on 420. Maybe not for you guys, but for me right here, right now, as we said, it is 420. Thank you so much everyone for stopping by and vibing with me. I hope everyone's having a super fire, super fly stony day. Let me know what you're token on and where you watch the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop that fat like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret, unlisted grow and smoke videos, our super fire VIP Discord community, or if you want to get some one-on-one grow help, definitely check us out on Patreon. I'm going to have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. This is the stage where I feel like a lot of people screw up and it's also the stage of growth that I absolutely can't fucking stand. So I think it's a great topic to talk about today. And because a few people on my discord, especially been asking me for a tips video on the seed link stage specifically and how to get through it every single time without any issues. And I'm going to give you some tips that help me along the way. Also real quick, if you guys want to hang out with me on Twitch, I usually stream dead by daylight on weekday morning. So be sure to follow us on there and if you have Amazon Prime definitely drop that free Twitch Prime subscription it really helps us out I'm gonna have the link to the Twitch channel in the upper right hand corner over here I'm gonna say that without a doubt it's obvious that the seed link stage is the most important and crucial stage because without a successful seed link stage you're never gonna get anywhere you won't get into flowering or anything so as important as a lot of you guys might be like well what about flowering dude like that's that's where all the dank stank is at bruh you're not getting here without being successful with your seed links bruh let's start with the environment because everything lives and dies with your environment. I would normally recommend always staying in the 70s during the vegetative stage, but for the seedling stage specifically, try to nail that. Keep it in the upper 70s. Like you can hit 80 degrees at this point, but I would try to keep it between maybe 75 to 79 degrees. However, if you do happen to hit 80 degrees, the world shall live on. And as far as the humidity goes, keep it above 55% and the higher you get, you're gonna need some really good airflow so that way you can prevent mold and I've already gone on a bunch of tirades on how trash a lot of the ventilation holes and a lot of the germination kits are so just what you want to do is get make sure to get one of those personal fans at good old Wally World Walmart I don't know if you guys call them Wally World or not but I don't know up around in the Northeast or whatnot we always call them Wally World but seriously get one of those personal fans from Walmart I'm gonna have a picture of what you should be looking for on screen and you want to put this in your germination kit do not point it at your ladies I mean I feel like I shouldn't have to say it, but people aren't gonna end up putting it in front of their ladies. Point it on like an angle, so that way it's gonna hit the walls of your dome, and then the air is gonna bounce off the walls, and it's gonna create some kind of turbulence. And the idea is to have your stems moving around as slightly as possible, but as long as you're making them move around a little bit. You don't want them to go be going all crazy, because then you're gonna invite some wind burn action, and they just do not like an unnatural amount of wind. Now, by putting a personal fan in your germination kit, you're completely completely eliminating any chance of mold. I've had my humidity over 70%, I shit you not, and I would get mold every single time, but as soon as I threw in that personal fan in there, I never had any issues after that. So get one of those personal fans, it's like seven to $10 at Walmart. And in case you guys get that brilliant idea that I had, well, I mean, I guess on the outside, if you've never done it before, I guess it's kind of a good idea. Do not take a tower fan or an oscillating fan or any kind of fan and put it in front of the vent hole from the outside. I'm telling you right now it's not going to be enough airflow you will get mold still i've done it and i've gotten it just do it the way i told you and put it on the inside as far as the waterings go i feel like i've nailed this down to a science like i'm comfortable enough to say that so start with 10 to 15 sprays for your first week once a day and then in the second week give them 10 to 15 sprays the same thing as in the first week but every one and a half days now the reason i've been doing it this way is because the very first week it's really important for your ladies to not dry out but as as soon as they start to develop a root system, they're not gonna need as much water and you don't wanna create an overwatering problem, especially this early on. That's why the second week I go an extra half day without water. Trust me, that extra half day is gonna do you a solid. Of course, use your best judgment and don't water until you start seeing some dry patches on your topsoil. Like if it's a day and a half and your soil's still wet, obviously don't start watering because it's already still wet. Make sure you get some dry patches in there. I know this can get like really hairy and really tricky because you want your roots to have some moisture but at the same time you don't want them to get waterlogged so it's kind of really tricky when it comes to what your watering practices should be and shouldn't be but once I start getting those dry patches that's my green light right over there. Now, as far as the lighting is concerned, just do yourselves a favor and get an AC Infinity germination kit. Get the one that comes with the two LED strips. I think they sell one that has just the one. Make sure to spend a couple extra bucks just to get the two. I like it that way because you get full coverage on your 
germination kit and I don't like brands that only give you the one LED strip right down the middle of your germination kit because if you have two rows of ladies you're gonna have to spend at least once a day get them moving around like you have to do a half spin every single day and I'm telling you right now that gets hella annoying super quickly okay I mean you're doing that every single morning I know what about the sun blaster you recommended the sun blaster what are you doing I do have the sun blaster germ kit and I think I've even told you guys that once I found out the AC Infinity makes their own germination kit this is also before I found out that AC Infinity makes their own germination kit with the two LED light strips and I'm telling you right now as soon as I saw that on Amazon I was sold immediately and the only problem that I have with the germination kit is the terrible vent hole design but it doesn't really matter if you just put in the personal fan in there anyway so just get it done now as far as the containers that you should be using I know there are a lot of different options out there if you're starting off in clones uh, we're going old school okay we're gonna go with rock wool cubes all the way they're just really easy they're great to start off with and super simple to transplant into a cup when it comes to whether you should be getting the coconut husk containers which I've been using for years or using the solo cups it really depends on your situation the coconut husk containers they do retain a lot more moisture as I've mentioned in a lot of my other videos so if you have a higher chance of getting mold but you know you have a personal fan in there then you don't really have to worry about it you could just go with the coconut husk containers every single time but if you don't have a personal fan or you just I don't know you have some kind of problems you got a different kind of germination kit you're worried about mold then I would just honestly go with a solo cup it just makes things a little bit easier for you so let's just recap everything we were talking about today right keep your temperatures in the upper 70s keep your humidity about 55 percent get a personal fan for your germination kit so you don't get any kind of mold or even any chance of mold make sure that your germination kit has a dual light system like the ac infinity i was talking about the two light led strips make sure to water 10 to 15 sprays a day for the first week and then 10 to 15 sprays every one and a half days for the second week and you should be solid and like i said if it's a day and a half and you're not seeing any dry patches then leave it alone go with two days okay so i see a lot of this stuff in horticulture you got to get out of the mindset of everything being in black and white horticulture is a big fat gray area all around that's why a lot of people have different theories and different growth styles because not there's not only one right way to do something you know what i'm saying that's why i'm saying there's a lot of gray area when it comes to horticulture listen i know some of these tips might seem pretty easy but you would just be amazed at how many people have made the ceiling stage not so easy including myself i'll throw myself under the bus because there have been times that i've messed up the ceiling stage because i didn't follow certain directions and certain tactics that i didn't know at the time and it's okay to not know something biggest rule of thumb in life and this goes for anything it doesn't matter what topic what you like what we're talking about nobody knows anything about anything unless someone teaches you something or you read about something that's just the way it goes as far as anything that's how it goes for gaming that's how it goes for writing music that's how it goes for doing horticulture that goes for anything even changing a tire your dad doesn't teach you how to change a tire when you're young you're not going to know how to change a tire unless you do your own research and learn how to do it so that's what i'm saying not knowing something does not make you a failure not knowing something does not make you dumb it just makes you uninformed and not knowledgeable for whatever that is that you haven't learned yet so everything is a learning experience and i just want you guys to remember that so you guys if you messed up you did not fail you know you got to take your bumps and bruises along the way that goes for anything you try to do so having said all that before we close out today's video i want to thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on patreon and for only 11.99 a month you get access to our vip discord community all the exclusive videos that i can't show you guys on youtube one-on-one -on -one grow help live streams and a lot of other really awesome stuff so if that's something you're interested in check it out i'm going to have the link in the pin message right down below it's the first message you're going to see and it's also going to be in the beginning of the video you know i say it's the upper right hand corner or whatnot so if you want to kind of start over in a video then you definitely could and to everyone else be sure to sub mash that like button and subscribe for more videos and most importantly turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and i hope everyone has a great rest of their day and as always stay safe peace